All right, now we're back in business again. Well, what do you want me to talk about? I'm, I'm afraid I'm drifting away. No, no, you're not a bit. This is just fine. This is, we're going along very much as I hoped we would. Um, we were talking about your uh, your family life back in those days when you were growing up as a boy, and I wonder to what extent uh, you... Uh, what, who were your boyhood friends? Were you pretty much... Uh, Related to your own family, your cousins, and your own brother. Or well, during you... during the years uh, during the years up to the time we moved to St. Paul, up to 1907, uh, most of the friends we I had were my cousins, my brother, and my cousins. Uh, I don't recall many people, other people in the Bagman. Well, there was. There were members of the O'Neill family. Mr. William O'Neill was the was the uh, in charge of logging and railroading for the Nebagaman Lumber Company, and uh, he had a large family, several sons, one of whom was afterwards manager of the Snoqualmie Falls Lumber Company, and uh, we used to see them a great deal. And uh, otherwise, I think it seems, and we had other visitors come there, but that was generally it. It seems to me the summers we spent uh, were, we were on the water a great deal, boating, swimming. Father had an old launch called the Amita, which was very difficult to start. And uh, many of my, my early recollections centered around that. <clears throat> then there was a, the Brule, River is only a little off, a little, little ways off. How is that spelled? B r u l e. It's it's uh, means burnt, burned in French, as I understand it. Leading out of uh, leading, it's all flowing into the in Lake Superior. Into Lake. Flows into Lake Superior, but yeah. it but it has its origin near near Lake Nebagman. Mm -hmm. uh, it was possible to go down at what we call the Nebagman Creek, out of Lake Nebagman into the Brule. But uh, what we generally did was take canoes on an old, uh, with, a, with a team of horses, and haul them over to what we call Stone's Landing. Uh, and we'd ride over in carriages, and we'd put into the brule at that point, and we'd uh, take guides either on the brule, or we'd take a few, a met with one or two men from uh, the Bagaman. They guide the boats down to a place called Winnebago. I don't remember how you spell Winnebago, but anyway. <clears throat> then we'd pull them out. It was a station on the Duluth South Shore on the Atlantic Railroad. And the train came through from Duluth about six in the evening, and we'd put the canoes in the baggage car and climb aboard and ride back in the bag of them. That only took about 15 minutes to get back. <laughs> But those were great experiences. As years went on, we became uh, sufficiently expert with canoes to run, run the rapids ourselves. And who were you? Was this your brother Phil and uh, your cousin Fritz? And, well, or who, uh, who were involved in these? Ed Davis things? and Fritz Jewett and Philip. And uh, myself, I guess that was it. That was, that was the, much. the usual. We the usual foursome we had. Uh -huh. During this period, you, did you develop any uh, interests that stayed with you through your life? I think fishing was one thing we, we learned to do and enjoy. Mm -hmm. uh, we, uh, we built things. We built a, a building uh, that is still up there. We used it, we called it a workshop. And, uh, we, we, I've forgotten that we must have gotten the lumber from the sawmill and uh, you boys actually put it together oh yeah sure we put it together we put the whole thing together until we got to the framing around the eaves and the finer finish work at that point I think your father got a carpenter to do that for us but we did all the rest but you were just little sprouts at that time you couldn't have been very old. Well, at that point, I think I think that was I think at that point we were around I was around 15 or 16. Mm -hmm. That was in the summer, but uh, 
earlier than that, Philip and I built what we called a Daniel Boone cabin, which we got out of a book. We had four big posts, and on top of that you'd put a, a platform, and then you'd put, the, you'd put members up and make a box out of it, and then you had a kind of a machicolated top. Is that the right word? I think so. Or you, you, you <laughs> it one board would go higher, the next board lower, so you could lean over and shoot an arrow out of it or a gun yeah. or something. I remember when we were nailing those boards on the side walls, Philip leaned over and he was leaned over a little too far and he went head first down about 13 feet and landed in a bucket of nails. Yeah. It didn't hurt a bit. Uh, but uh, we, we had many experiences with that. Finally, Father decided it was dangerous, and one summer we got back there and it was all gone. We were horribly disappointed in that. Then we slept in, we slept in a tent out in the, in the, in the summer, and uh, we had many experiences out there. I remember uh, on the pump house out behind the house, there was an old locomotive bell. In the morning, when breakfast was ready, the cook would go out and ring the bell. And so we thought that was kind of cruel. So one night, nobody was looking, we climbed up on top and nailed the rope to the roof. <laughs> so she went out to jerk the rope and <laughs> got to the bell. <laughs> we had a big fuss about that. Who did that? Uh -huh. And so then we had... Uh, you played your share of pranks then. Oh, we had a lot of fun those days. Different, doing different things. Was this a time in which your lifelong interest in hunting began to develop? No, I never shot a thing up there. I couldn't, I didn't have a gun. And, uh, that came along later. Oh, yeah. Much later. Much later. To what extent did you enter into uh, uh, things that you could share with your father in these years? He left to take us fishing, uh -huh. <clears throat> and we uh, he'd take us on canoe trips. Father had a lot of uh, felt a great responsibility to be with his children. And we were very, very close. We were. Oh yeah. Uh -huh. Let's see what this is. All right. <clears throat> Hello. Fine. <clears throat> Well, you obviously had a, a very uh, kind of happy uh, boyhood in this uh, locale up there in northern Wisconsin. Well, we certainly did, yes. And uh, you must have been very close then to your brother, Phil, who was That's how right. far apart from you in age? He was just exactly four years younger, in two days. He was born on January 18th, and I was born on January 16th. Mm -hmm. We're four years apart. So you were close growing we up. We were very together. close, and we were we were uh, very close together all our lives because we would discuss things together, and you know, knew pretty well what the other people were thinking about. <clears throat> and many things we did we did we uh, did together. So. Well, your early training too was was. Uh, greatly influenced uh, by your grandfather's notions about how of the basic principles that should be uh, developed in, in your character. And, and this, too, I presume, was picked up and, and accentuated by your father. And uh, I would gather from what you said, your, your stepmother, too, was uh, Probably a rather large influence on the formation of your in your early years. Yeah, that's true. I don't know that there's any different anybody, many many other people. Uh, grandfather was uh, a great believer in in work and in thrift and in uh, in uh, finishing up what you had to do, doing it right. Paying your debts, honoring your obligations. 
how did he impose his ideas of these things on you? Well, just by example. By example. Yeah, I think he just he talked that way, and his I think his sons all had it. And uh, <clears throat> my father certainly had it to a very high degree. He also influenced you to some extent in what he gave you to read. I saw a book in your office today that indicated how his influence was brought to bear on you. Would you like to comment on that? You mean, you mean Poor Richard's Almanac? Right. Well, he gave he gave each one of us a copy of Poor Richard's Almanac, and uh, which you know emphasizes all these virtues, mm -hmm. and uh, he taught us this poem or asked us to learn this poem by Sarah Dowdney about listening to the water mill, which emphasized the importance of time and uh, using your opportunities to the best advantage. Uh, well, he certainly was and, a uh, dramatic evidence of the philosophy itself, wasn't he? His busy life he was very much of that. You saw it to some extent at first hand. You saw your grandfather making his regular trip around. Well, you see, when I knew him, I, I, I don't think I was particularly conscious of his business life until, um, oh, I was. Uh, 12, 14 years old, and I don't think I was then so much. <clears throat> but when he was, let's see, at night, when I was 10 years old, he was, it was 1905, and I think by that time he was, he'd been sick and he, he wasn't as active anywhere near as he had been. He, uh, he took us all out to Yellowstone Park. I have a book full of pictures of it too. In here, <coughs> the, was this a, a railroad trip? Yes, he took us out. He had a he had a, a private car. And he took us out in the Northern Pacific on this on his car. And he took the, he took those grandchildren who could uh, dress themselves and. Uh, in other words he limited uh the participants in these trips to those children who had reached a certain degree of self-sufficiency. Well, this was just one trip. Uh, now I see. No, I can't find it. No, let me see. Hold on. Was this a trip that he made after he had more or less started to retire from uh, active participation? Well, I should uh, remember the year. I'm, I'm stuck on it. I can't remember. Uh-huh. Somewhere here, I have a whole bunch of photographs of it. I don't think you, maybe it isn't worth pursuing it. But, All right. But the well, those are different. Those aren't the books that were. Uh, was this the only trip that you ever made with your grandfather? You remember doing anything else with him? Of, uh, well, let me see. Probably were other things he did, but I just don't remember them. Mm -hmm. Someplace here we have these, these, a bunch of these photographs. I've got wonderful pictures of many of these things, but I guess maybe it didn't work. Well, this looks like a gay skylark here of a bunch of people uh, uh, 
It looks to me as if they're on the Mississippi here on a steamboat with a log, a log raft and uh, a lot of hijinks aboard uh, a vessel known as the E. Rutledge. Edward Rutledge, that's right. That the old uh, steamboat? Uh, there were tow boats? They had three steamboats. Uh -huh. As I remember, they pushed. There was the FCA Tankman and the Edward Rutledge and the. Uh, um, and the F warehouse. And who are all these children on the bow of the Edward Rutledge? Are you one of them? I don't know. Can you identify these people? I doubt if I can. Let me see. I kind of think I might have been, but I'm not sure. The man at the right was, that, was William McIntyre. The man at the right was William McIntyre. Yeah. Uh -huh. This man. Oh, here. Yeah. This man. Oh, I said, look in one picture. Oh. Let's see if I recognize him. This isn't you sitting on the side here, is it? I don't think so. I don't think you can see that. Mm -hmm. I might be the little guy with his hair on that. I don't know. There are some other pictures here that are probably These are very clear. clear. These are very poor pictures. Well, that one might be better. Now, there's my father there. Yeah. Standing well, on let the... Me, let, me, uh, let me get up. Let me get up. On the right-hand side of the group. Well, this might be... I can see this. Okay. Oh, I can see my mother. That my mother is right back there, the top and the left. Yeah. And this is S. S. Davis is right there. Ed Davis' mother. This is the larger group standing on the, and sitting on the bow yeah. of the Rutledge. And your mother is on the extreme left in the back row, and Mrs. Who is that? That's that Davis. That's that Davis. Then there's another lady holding a child uh, in the center. Mm -hmm. Who is that? You know? No, I have no idea. And this is your father on the extreme. I'm guessing that my, I'm guessing that that I'm there, and that my sister is right there. Oh yeah. But it's hard for me to tell. You're the possibly the the little fella in the middle there I'm with a, who it is. A, ha a cap on. It could be. Uh huh. There's nothing about me there that will really give you much of an impression. Uh huh. Well, now over here there seems to be a lot of hijinks going on. Was there some kind of a I can't play remember. acting or anything? I can't or do you remember. remember any of this I can't here? remember this, but I, I must have been. Recognize any of those dressed up no. characters? Oh sure, I know who they are. Who is this? This is this is William McIntyre, and this is my father over here, and this is S. S. Davis, and this man I don't remember. He was a friend, and he was that that regular right house party. Yeah. Well, well, they were evidently uh, well, they're having fun, having too. lots of fun there because. Sure. And here's a lineup of the kids. And they're dressed up too in costumes. Mm -hmm. I can't tell. You can't tell who they are. You don't recognize. Well, there you recognize. It's my father there. Yeah, uh -huh. Doing a kick, yeah. Well, it, it, it's obvious that there was a lot of. Now, do you recognize that little girl? Is that your sister or one? You know, but that did Davis. His mother used to dress him up in dresses. Oh, is that right? Looks like A. W. Davis. Mm -hmm. I don't know. This looks like my sister. I didn't think she'd be that old looking. Now, do you recognize yourself there? No, I don't. That's I don't not you. I think that's Eddie McIntyre. And what, a, what about these three here? No. You don't recognize them? No. In this album, they're clearly identified as your family. Oh, sure. I can hear you can tell them. This is your thing. It is Miss Lightford, who is our governor. Miss Lightford was your governor. Yeah. This is uh, I, his folks, and his husband. Oh, yeah. S.S. Davis, my father, Edwin Davis. 
Uh-huh. And this lady here is Mrs. SSD. Mrs. SSD. Uh -huh. And then this picture was taken where? At Lake Nebraska. Lake Nebraska. That was just about nineteen three or four. And here you had a pony, evidently. Oh, well, this, I think that's a pony. Uh-huh. There's the sawmill. Can't see much of it. There's the folk. Elizabeth. Father, that's your father. I think mm -hmm. so. Yeah. According to that, that shows looking from our house down to the lumber yard. You know, you weren't very far removed from the lumber yard. Huh? That's the lumber yard. Mm -hmm. Now this is the this is sort of interesting. Did you ever hear of the? Uh, he's had his own wooden side yet. Like that. This is a, a bridge over the brewery, right down. Uh, at the old Pierce place, which is now Jack Ordway's place, on the brewery. Oh, yeah. Did you ever go down there? I don't think I have, but I, I've heard somewhere about that. Well, these are pictures of the brewery. Uh -huh. That's some of the rapids, uh -huh. which look pretty little in the back. There's part of the tree. Uh -huh. There's Seems like a family outing. Well, that's some relatives, the cousins, my father. These are much my stepmother and Miss Amy, just like it. Mm -hmm. oh. Ed yeah, Davis in the Davis baseball game yeah. with his baseball suit on. Here you are. Here, here's Fritz Jewett, my sister. Oh. Yeah, that's Elizabeth, huh? Mm -hmm. I guess it is Elizabeth. It's all for myself. You see, I don't know what we're doing with baseball. It's just that apple tree over there. Mm -hmm. Well, those aren't particularly uh, they aren't particularly good. That's a uh, this is a wagon was given us by Mr. Ed Dinkman, mm -hmm. cousin of my father. Well, we were down fishing at, at White Bear Lake some of years. We spent a summer there. Uh huh. White Bear Lake was another scene of uh, familiar to you as a child, I think. Yes, we spent a summer there. In the, uh, I, I don't remember the year. I guess it was 19, about 19, might have been 1904 or 5. Some of these pictures then were taken at that in, in that summer probably. <laughs>